a continuation of uh, the ministry of a pastor. And of course, we had earlier on look on the traits of a sheep. And also we had defined who is a pastor, who is a shepherd from the scriptures. But what a better way to define it through Christ's perspective. That is Christ, the model pastor. We know the church is a theocracy. That means a people ruled by God. And God often refers to himself as a shepherd. Look at Genesis 49, 24. But his bow remained firm and steady in the strength that does not fail. For his arms were made strong and agile by the hands of the mighty one of Jacob. By the name of the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Just go and read the whole of Genesis 49. Tell me more about that. Ezekiel 34, 12 to 14. As a shepherd cares for his sheep on the day that he is among his scattered flock. So I will care for my sheep. And I will rescue them from all the places to which they were scattered on a cloudy and gloomy day. I will, I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries and bring them to their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the streams and in all the inhabited places of the land. I will feed them in a good pasture. And the grazing ground will be on the mountain heights of Israel. There they will lie down on good grazing ground and feed in rich pastures. On the mountains of Israel. Talking about God being the shepherd. And also we can see that God ministered to his people Israel as a shepherd. What did he do? Number one. He guided them. Psalms 23 verse 3. He refreshes and restores my soul. He restores my life. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Number two. He fed them. Just like a shepherd feeds his sheep. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 40, 19. And I will bring Israel home again to his pasture. And he will graze on the most fertile lands of Carmel in the west and Bashan in the east. And his soul will be satisfied on the hills of Ephraim and Gilead. Number three. He rested and watered them. Still talking about Psalms 23 verse 2. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still and quiet waters. Isaiah 40, 11, He will protect his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom. He will gently and carefully lead those nursing their young. Another thing that God does as a shepherd, he protected them. Psalms 23, verse 4, Even though I walk through the sunless valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod to protect, your staff, to guide. They comfort and console me. Number five, what he does, or what he did as a shepherd, he called and gathered the strays. Isaiah 56 verse 8, the Lord God who gathers the dispersed of Israel declares, I will gather yet others to them, Israel, to those already gathered. Or Zechariah 10 verse 8, verse 8, I will whistle for them and gather them together. So the Lord whistles, eh? If you didn't know that. For I have redeemed them and they will increase again as they have increased before in Egypt. Another thing the Lord did, he carried the lambs in his bosom. Just like we've seen in Isaiah 40 verse 11. And then, finally, he gently led, led those with the young ones. Still Isaiah 40 11. So when Jesus came, he put a face on God. People could hear. They could see what their divine shepherd was really like. In fact, Peter called Jesus the chief shepherd. First Peter 5, 4. Jesus became the perfect model of the shepherd heart of God. So shepherds working under the chief shepherd, Jesus should carefully study the heart and motivation of the chief shepherd. Although our ministry is not the same as was the ministry of Jesus. Many of our attitudes and motivations should resemble those of Jesus. These are the people that have been called to pastoral ministry. So every pastor should have the shepherd heart of Jesus. How? What are those qualities of the shepherd heart of Jesus? Number one, Jesus had love and compassion for the people of God and that is required of a shepherd. 
Mark chapter 6 verse 34. When Jesus went ashore, he saw a large crowd waiting and he was moved with compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd, lacking guidance. And he began to teach them many things. Another thing, having a shepherd out of Jesus, of course, Jesus placed great value on each sheep. Luke 15 verse 4. So, a shepherd needs to place great value on each sheep. Don't generalize. What a man among you, if he has a hundred sheep and loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost, searching until he finds it. That's a heart like Jesus. Another thing, Jesus was willing to lay down his life for the sheep. As a shepherd, are you willing to lay down your life for your sheep? Or is it the other way, the sheep laying down their lives for you? John chapter 10 verse 11 and also 15 verse 11. I mean, uh, sorry, John chapter 10 verse 11 and verse 15. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his own life for the sheep. Even as the father knows me, I know the father and laid down my very own life, sacrificing it for the benefit of the sheep. It's un so unfortunate that we have shepherds who would rather make the sheep sacrifice for them and not the other way around. So because of his love for the flock of God, Jesus was very concerned that they will have a proper care when he was gone. Therefore, he gave pastors to shepherd his sheep in his absence. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 13. So like all other elders in the church, every pastor is under shepherd. He is directly responsible to Jesus for his service to God's people. 1 Peter 5 verse 1 to 4. Therefore, I strongly urge the elders among you, that is pastors, spiritual leaders of the church, as a fellow elder and as an eyewitness called to testify of the sufferings of Christ, as well as one who shares in the glory that is to be revealed. He say, shepherd, guide, and protect the flock of God among you, exercising oversight not under compulsion, but voluntarily according to the will of God, and not motivated for shameful gain, but with wholehearted enthusiasm, not loading it over those assigned to your care. Do not be arrogant or overbearing, but be example of Christian living to the flock. That is, set a pattern of integrity for your congregation. And when the chief shepherd Christ appears, you will receive the conqueror's unfading crown of glory. Amen. So, he must always look to Jesus. The pastor must always look to Jesus as the good and the great shepherd for direction and approval of his ministry. So to be a pastor is a great responsibility, but it is also a noble and a blessed calling. Amen. Let's look at the standard for a pastor. The standard for a pastor. Number one, he must be able to lead the ship. John 10 verse 4. When he has brought all his own sheep outside, he walks on ahead of them. And the sheep follow him because they know his voice and recognize his call. This means we can wisely and safely lead others only along paths on which we ourselves as pastors have gone before. So the pastor must himself have a close and proven walk with God before he can lead others in the ways of God. If a pastor wants his people to pray, tithe, read the word, and reach out to others, he must set the example. He must live a lifestyle which the sheep can follow. Follow me, Paul was saying, as I follow Christ. Imitate me as I imitate Christ. 1 Corinthians 1, I mean 11 verse 1. Hebrews 13, 7. Remember your leaders, for it was they who brought you the word of God and consider the result of their conduct, the outcome of their godly lives, 
and imitate their faith, that is, their conviction that God exists and is the creator and ruler of all things, the provider of eternal salvation through Christ, and imitate their reliance on God with absolute trust and confidence in his power, wisdom, and goodness. Very important. 1 Peter 5, 2, 3. Shepherd, guide, and protect the flock of God among you, exercising oversight, not under compassion, but voluntarily, according to the will of God, and not motivated for shameful gain, but with wholehearted enthusiasm, not loading over those assigned to your care, by not being arrogant or bearing, but be example of Christian living to the flock. That is set a pattern of integrity for your congregation. That's a standard for a pastor. Able to lead the sheep. Number two, he must be able to feed the flock. Jeremiah 3, Jeremiah 3 verse 15 and chapter 23 verse 4. Then in the final time, I will give you a spiritual shepherds after my own heart who will feed you with knowledge and true understanding. I will set up shepherds over them who will feed them and they will not be afraid any longer, nor be terrified, nor will any be missing, says the Lord. Or Ezekiel 34 verse 1 to 3, Son of man, Prophesy against the shepherd of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, the spiritual shepherds, that says the Lord God. War judgment is coming to the spiritual shepherds of Israel who have been feeding themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flock? That's what God is asking. A shepherd should be able to feed the flock. Acts 20, 28. Take care and be on guard for yourselves and for the whole flock over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you as overseers. That is to shepherd, to feed, to tend, to guide the church of God which he brought, which he bought with his own blood. Feed the flock. 1 Peter 5, 2 to 3. Shepherd, guide, protect. I mean, these are all mentioned all through, all through. We need to feed the flock as a pastor. So a pastor can give only what he has got. To minister the word of God, he must be in the word. And the word must be in him. Two things. The pastor must be in the word. And the word must be in the pastor. This involves prayer, study, thought and obedience, application of the word. So the the truth of God's word must be at work in a pastor's own life, before it can be put into the life of another. Jeremiah specifies this, chapter 10, verse 21. For the shepherd of the people have become like brutes, irrational and stupid. (laughs) Oh my, harsh words. And have not searched for the Lord or asked about him or realized their need for him. Therefore, they have not been wise and have not prospered, and all their flocks are scattered. If you don't want your flock to be scattered, don't be stupid, as the Bible mentioned. Acts chapter 6, verse 4. But we will continue to devote ourselves steadfastly to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Be in the word, let the word be in you. Let it be practical, apply it in your life. So a pastor must also be able to preach and teach in such a clear and simple way. That all can understand. You must be able to reach people at their place of need and level of maturity. So their spiritual diet must be fresh and balanced with variety. Sometimes this can be done by bringing visiting preachers and teachers just to equip the body. Number three, standard of the pastor. He must have a personal relationship with the sheep. Very important. Have a personal relationship with the sheep. Don't give that responsibility to another person. John 10, 27. The sheep that are my own hear my voice and listen to me. I know them and they follow me. So Jesus was able to be close to people without losing their respect. He knew them personally by name. (laughs) And they knew him. So this Truly is a mark of a good shepherd. John 10 verse 3. The doorkeeper opens the gate for this man 
and the sheep hear his voice and pay attention to it. And knowing that they listen, he calls his own sheep by name and lead them out to pasture. Only then can a pastor minister into the deepest needs of the lives of his people when he knows them. So the pastor must identify with the sheep. He must sit, walk, and talk with them where they are. He must be honest in allowing them to know he is not only a shepherd, but one of them as well. A sheep in the flock of God. Only then can he minister with understanding and compassion, with love, grace, and wisdom. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 to 4. Blessed, gratefully praised, and adored be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comforts, who comforts and encourages us in every trouble so that we will be able to comfort and encourage those who are in any kind of trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. So whatever God ministered to us, let's reciprocate. Let's do it with the flock. Very important. Number four, he must be willing to lay down his life for the sheep. That's a standard for a pastor. And we have read John 10, 15. Even as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my very own life, sacrificing it for the benefit of the sheep. 1 John 3, 16. By this we know and have come to understand the depth and essence of his precious love, that he willingly laid down his life for us because he loved us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the believers. Revelation 20, to, Revelation 12, 11. And they overcame and conquered him because of the blood of the Lamb and because of the word of their testimony. For they did not love their life and renounce their faith even when faced with death. So both the pastor and his people need to know that the pastor's ministry is not just a job, but a calling life. Nowadays we find people are Doing business as pastors, they'll be answerable to the chief shepherd when time comes. So the pastor is committed to the flock of God in love and loyalty. A pastor's commitment to God's people involves many things. But I'll just mention a couple of things. His commitment to God's people. Number one, pouring out his life and strength. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Number two, caring for the sheep in times of need. Ezekiel 34 verse 4. You have not strengthened those who are weak. You have not healed the sick. You have not bandaged the crippled. You have not brought back those gone astray. You have not looked for the host, but you have ruled them with force and violence. Those are the things that this shepherd has not done. Uh, and there is a need for the shepherd to care for the sheep in time of need. The man runs, John chapter 10 verse 13. The man runs because he is a hired hand who serves only for wages and is not concerned about the, for, about the safety of the sheep. There has to be a concern for the safety of the sheep. So that's a warning. Another one, commitment to God's people involves staying with the sheep in times of trouble. John 10, 12. But the hired man who merely serves for wages, who is neither the shepherd nor the owner of the sheep, when he sees the wolf coming, deserts the flock and runs away, and the wolf snatches the sheep and scatters them. So when the sheep are in trouble, stay with them. Stay and protect them. Another commitment, visiting in the homes of the sheep. It's so unfortunate that most pastors, they want to be visited. It's not scriptural. It is them that are supposed to visit the homes of the sheep. Zechariah chapter 10, verse 2 to 3. For the teraphim, household idols, speak wickedness, emptiness, worthlessness, and the diviners see lying visions and tell false dreams. They comfort in vain. Therefore, the people wander like sheep. They are afflicted and suffer because there is no shepherd. My anger is kindled against the shepherd who are no true shepherds, and I shall punish the male God's leaders. For the Lord of hosts has visited his flock. If God can visit his flock, not waiting for a flock to visit him. How about you and I? 
who have been assigned by the great chief shepherd to visit the house of Judah and will make them like his beautiful and majestic horse in the battle. And lastly, commitment to God's people, watchful care for their safety. Hebrews 13 verse 17. Obey your spiritual leaders and submit to them, recognizing their authority over you, for they are keeping watch over your souls, keeping watch over your souls and continually guarding your spiritual welfare as those who will give account of the stewardship of you. They have to watchfully care for the safety of the ship. So those are very, very important things to note. The standard for a pastor. Being able to lead the ship, being able to feed the flock, having a personal relationship with the ship, must be willing to lay down his life for the ship by pouring out his life and strength, caring for the sheep in times of need, staying with the sheep in times of trouble, visiting in the homes of the sheep, and finally, watchful care for their safety. Lastly, let's look at the ministry of the pastor himself. What involves this ministry? Number one, he is always seeking out the lost sheep. He is always seeking out the lost sheep. Luke 15 verse 4. There are many sheep that wander and go astray, and a shepherd never gives up on one of those lost sheep. Instead, he keeps praying, calling, exhorting, encouraging the wayward sheep. That's what he does. That's what a a shepherd is required to do. That's what he does, and he's really required to do that. Go and read Luke 15 verse 4, leaving the 99 finding that one which has gone astray. Number two, he is always watching for the things that could harm the flock. Luke chapter 2 verse 8. So this means looking for wolves from without and wolves in sheep clothing from within. Mark that one. Looking for wolves from without and wolves in sheep clothing from within. So the sheep need to be protected from false teachers and false prophets. They need to be protected from those who cause trouble and division. A shepherd has to do this. Go and read John 10, 12 and Acts 20, 29. Number three, he is always caring for those in need. Just like we read John 10, verse 11 to 13. So, what it portrays here is that The needs may be spiritual, mental, emotional, or physical. They may involve the family, the work, the school, or other areas of everyday life. So a pastor seeks to bring comfort and counsel to the sick, to the dying, to the crippled, to the poor, to the widows, to the fatherless, and all who are hurting. It's a shepherd's very nature to help and to heal wherever he can. Caring for those in need. Number four, seeking to correct those who are in error. Psalms 23 verse 4. My rod and the staff, they comfort me. The shepherd's staff is used to reach and rescue the sheep that have gone astray. The rod is used to protect the sheep when they are in danger. So it is also used to correct the sheep when they are in error or rebellion. Discipline or correction is the most difficult responsibility the pastor must face. And it must be done in love and wisdom. But it must be done. It is for the good of both the sheep that needs correction and the flock as a whole. So a shepherd will not want Correct or discipline the sheep is not a good shepherd at all. Love is willing to discipline when it is needed. Go and read Hebrews chapter 2, verse 5 to 7. Tell you more. Amen. 
Yeah. Just talking about the pastor and his ministry. Very, very important. Next, we'll look at the warnings to pastor. And I'll take a lot of time here just to share with us. And that will take us to the judgment on unfaithful pastors. Very good. Father, we thank you for your word. Even as you've called us to shepherd your flock. Whom you've given us. By the Holy Spirit, we pray that you will, you've already released that grace to enable us to lead with a heart like Jesus. And so we pray that we'll be found faithful stewards of the manifold grace that you release upon our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.